The 13 most terrifying days in human history. The Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962, in which the U.S. and the Soviet Union were on the brink of nuclear war. Our guest tonight has a new book out called Above and Beyond, digging into those 13 days. Casey Sherman, uh, thanks for coming in and joining us here in studio thanks tonight. Thanks for having me back. Of course. Great to add you in to talk again. about the finest hours. That's right. That's right. And we want to set the stage here, October of 62. Right. Uh, the U.S. has deployed ballistic missiles in Italy and Turkey, and the Soviets, in response, deployed theirs in Cuba, right off the coast of Florida. So what does President Kennedy do next? Well, that's a great question. You know, uh, we looked at President Kennedy not necessarily as a statesman, but we wondered why, you know, what really motivated his critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Kennedy originally wanted to take those missiles out. That's what he told his advisors. Mm -hmm. And then for the sake of the world, we had 13 days for the president to really evolve right. in his thinking and uh, work toward a peaceful solution. They were pushing him to, to save Cuba from Castro. Right. Oh, <laughs> to invade Cuba and take yeah. out the missiles. Yeah, you know, my, my dad was a U.S. Marine uh, stationed in South Florida at the time, waiting orders mm. to invade Cuba. There's wow. a great likelihood that I wouldn't be here to do this interview today because if we invaded Cuba, it would have been the largest land invasion since D-Day. Tanks would have rolled in West Berlin, and then you would have had thermonuclear war. And the Soviets, of course, had the missiles there in Cuba. You go into detail, of course, about President Kennedy's actions during the crisis, but you also profile two U-2 pilots who had a critical role in saving the U.S. as well. Their stories are largely untold. Tell us about that. Stories are largely untold. Anybody that loved our book, The Finest Hours, you know, we bring you right into the cockpit, much like we brought you over the waves in that sea rescue. We're talking about two U-2 pilots pilots flying at 72,000 feet in an unarmed aircraft, unarmed, alone, and unafraid. One of these pilots uh, gets lost over the Soviet Union in the longest U-2 uh, flight in recorded history. At the same time, one of his best friends mm. is flying a mission over Cuba, and he actually gets shot down by the Soviets mm -hmm. and killed. So they call that uh, Black Saturday, October 27th, 1962, and it's the closest we ever came to nuclear war, and Kennedy's got to make a decision. What does he do? Right. M Charles Maltzby was the U-2 pilot who uh, invaded Soviet space. Correct. Right. And the other pilot, Anderson? Rudy yes, Anderson. Rudy, Rudy Anderson, Anderson. the one who died. What do you think, why did Kennedy hold off even though a lot of advisors were pushing him to take more action. Because I think Kennedy was the first uh, U.S. president in modern times who had experienced combat firsthand. Mm -hmm. He had a Japanese destroyer right. PT split his PT boat. Two men died under his command. He spent the next eight days saving their lives. We write about that uh, in the book because we think it really affected him as a statesman, where he's not just looking at numbers on a board like a lot of the generals were, but he knew that every Marine, every sailor, and every U.S. soldier was a man with families. And I think that really weighed on him, and that allowed him to pull back at the most critical time in world history. And ultimately, he decides not to invade Cuba. Instead Instead, he uh, creates a blockade or quarantine for Soviet-backed ships that are trying to get to Cuba, potentially with missiles. After several standoffs, they reach an agreement. Khrushchev, uh, it's, it's called that he famously blinked. Mm -hmm. And there are two schools of thought here. One is that Kennedy, by patience, saved the world from nuclear war. The other is that he led us up to this uh, with the Bay of Pigs and some other strategic blunders. Where do you come down on that? Uh, I come down right in the middle because I think that Kennedy's mistakes earlier in his uh, administration led to the Cuban Missile Crisis. Mm -hmm. And I also give a lot of credit to uh, Premier Nikita Khrushchev. Uh, he's looked at as the enemy. Kennedy's looked at as the victor. Mm -hmm. I think they, without both of them, literally in leadership uh, positions at the time, we would have spiraled out of control. Yeah. They had both seen the horrors of, the, of mm. World War II. That, that's right. right. They that's knew right. what they were looking at. They knew Casey it. Sherman, congratulations on the book. And good I appreciate luck it. with Above and Beyond. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you guys for having me. Casey, thank you so much. Good the book is you. available now. Hey, Pamela.